In this video, we will be putting a hip roof on our 625 square foot house. And since the building is square, it's 25 feet by 25 feet, we will not have a ridge at the top of the roof and all of the hips will meet in the center. Now let's go ahead and remove the roof. Remember, we have a two bedroom, living room, kitchen, one bath and then a couple of closets here. And then our heating and air conditioning unit can go above the ceiling in this house. However, we will need to put the water heater somewhere, maybe on the outside of the house. And we will be conventionally framing this house. So we're going to have two by six ceiling joist that line up with each other, even though we don't have to line these up because our roof rafters aren't going to line up. And I'll explain the reason why here in a little bit. And we are gonna have a strong back here. This will be a two by four. You can always make this a two by six or a two by eight. And you can use building hardware where if you want to, to connect the ceiling joist to the strong back. And sometimes the strong back will reduce the chances of your ceiling joist sagging. However, I hate to say, I rarely came across that if the joists are undersized. So make sure that you're using the correct sized ceiling joist. And the strong back is located in between the two walls, about in the center somewhere. And then we're going to have blocks. And I will need a strap every four feet to basically create a rafter tie. And we will need an access hole into the attic. And the size of this hole will depend upon the furnace or the forced air unit or even the size of other building components that need to get through this hole. And when I was working in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of these holes were 30 inches by 30 inches. However, now I've noticed that they are a lot smaller on some projects. You can see here we do not have any ceiling backing. Wait a minute, now we do. And the ceiling backing here can be nailed to the top plates. We're going to be using a two by six because of our two by four walls. And if you can try to nail directly above the wall framing studs so that the plumbers and the electricians don't drill holes right where your nails are and ruin their drill bits. So if you can just kind of put your nails over the wall framing studs, that'll help a lot. And of course, a view of our backing here. We will have one inch if we're using a two by six over a two by four wall on each side. And that should provide enough room for you to attach your drywall to the ceiling backing. Now let's go ahead and zoom in over where the wash machine is gonna be located. If you notice, I don't have a block here. I have a block here. And the block here is basically to stabilize the end of the wall framing here. If I don't have this block, then this wall can kind of move wherever until it's drywalled. And then after that, it might not be plumb. So make sure that you stabilize anything when you run into a situation like this. Here, we're going to be able to nail the backing next to the ceiling joist to prevent the upper part of the wall from moving in either direction. And let's go ahead and take a look at the lower view here and then swing over to the other side. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the post. We are going to put a post in the center here, right underneath the hips. And just a few minutes ago, somebody emailed me a question. They were wondering how you can support a pyramid roof to prevent it from pushing the walls out. And this post just might help with that problem. And in this example, we're going to have the four hips connecting into each other. And next up, let's go ahead and add our fill rafters or our jack rafters. And I'm not gonna be coming off of the center here with a roof rafter. And the reason for that would be to reduce the amount of waste for the roof sheathing, even though I'm not 100% sure I actually accomplished that in this video. Let's go ahead and head down to the lower section. We're going to have square cut fascia board and we're basically only going to have a couple of flyers at the end there along with our drywall backing blocks. We're going to use blocks here in between the roof rafters to nail the corner of the drywall too. Take a look at it from the bottom. And this is a common method. I've been doing it for years. And of course, the layout for the roof rafters. You can see here where I have all of the jack rafters lining up with the opposing rafter. However, I'm not going to be able to connect the rafter on one side to the rafter on the other side for my rafter tie if I use this layout here. 
So just keep in mind that this right here might not work for your project and is simply going to provide you with another thing to consider or a good argument for not using a rafter in the center all the way around the perimeter and then pulling off of that rafter in each direction with your on center layout. Now keep in mind we might not have this problem if we had an evenly spaced measurement. 25 feet does not divide into two foot increments as well as 24 or 26 feet would. Next up let's go ahead and install our fascia board and then I want to kind of zoom in on the block here. I'm going to be using a block. I had to reduce the height of this ceiling joist to a 2x4 to go underneath the hips and that shouldn't be a problem if you can use a block like I'm using here. To increase the strength of the ceiling joist that's now overspanned. So we're just simply going to end nail the ceiling joist into the block and then end nail the block into the rafter. Another trick for your carpenter toolbox. Take a look at the corner how it's going to work out to attach our drywall to. And take a look at the fascia board and of course even though we reduce the height of the ceiling joist we're still going to have to notch a little bit of it around the bottom of the hip to make it work. And next up let's take a look at the fascia board corner here and then from the other side here. And let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing to provide you with a view from the bottom here. Go up you can see the edge of the sheathing where it beats the fascia board is going to be nice and square. Unlike if we use plum cut fascia board. And again like I said I don't really think this worked out like I thought it was going to. And we could always redo the layout for the roof sheathing. We could start a little further over to the right or a little further over to the left to make it work a little better. And hopefully that helps. Next up let's take a look at how you might install the plumbing in this house. So basically what we got here is a washer and dryer hookup, a kitchen sink, and a bathroom with a sink, toilet, and a bathtub shower combo. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the bathroom here and then head over to the kitchen sink. And I will be angling this pipe here so that I don't drill any holes through the window king studs. Another big no-no, but I'm guessing that a lot of building inspectors either let it go or just don't simply know that it is isn't allowed on most building codes with a 2x4 wall. You're allowed to do it on a 2x6 wall. So the kitchen sink is all inch and a half going all the way to a combo fitting here where we have a two inch pipe going to the wash machine. And then I have a clean out here. You can put the clean out above the fitting or below it. I haven't found anything that said you can't put these fittings or that you have to put the fittings above or below a sanitary tee like we have here. And of course we have an inch and a half pipe that is going to vent out of the roof. And we will have a long sweep 90 down here. Next up let's go ahead and head over to the combo fitting. We are going to have a 2 inch, 2 inch and an inch and a half coming in here. And then depending upon if this is going to be a 4 inch pipe in my example we have a 3 inch pipe. However your local building authorities might require a 4 inch pipe here. So we have a 2 inch coming into a 3 inch combo. A long sweep 90 over here. Next up let's head over to the wash machine. We're going to have a 2 inch pipe here. Now I'm pretty sure you can go out with an inch and a half for the vent above the sanitary tee. However I think you're going to need a 2 inch clean out here. So 2 inches all the way over to here. 2 inches all the way up to here. And then of course an inch and a half vent out. Now in my example I have a 2 inch vent pipe coming out above the sanitary tee and the clean out. And it looks like I made a mistake but I corrected it here. The minimum distance for the trap wear is going to be twice the diameter of the pipe. We have a two inch pipe here. So we're going to need four inches from this point to this point here which could affect the placement of the wall framing studs. You might need a little wider wall framing bay there. So again all two inches over here an inch and a half over here. And like I said I don't think you're going to have a problem coming out of this with an inch and a half vent through the roof. And then our clean out here. And the clean out here will need to be the same size as the pipe. Three inches. And it would need to be four inches if we were going to use a four inch pipe here. 
and then the direction of the drain flow is going to be going in this direction and this pipe will eventually hook up to a septic tank or a sewer drainage system. In our bathroom we're going to have a sink, a toilet, and a bathtub and we can come down vertically with a combo fitting into the drain line three inches to an inch and a half combo fitting and then an inch and a half sanitary tee for the sink. And then we're going to have a Y fitting that's going to come off of this pipe horizontally and then come up with a long sweep 90 here. And the vent for the toilet is going to be over here. So this is basically going to be a wet vent from here to here. So this vent will be used for the toilet and the bathtub. And this pipe here will be used to vent the bathroom sink inch and a half coming up to an upside down sanitary T two inch pipe here and again it's important to put the sanitary T upside down and I do have another video on that at our website so here's our overflow for the bathtub the drain coming in to the trap all inch and a half coming into another sanitary T so an inch and a half three inch over here three inch over here a long sweep 90 here and then a clean out here. The clean out will need to be three inches over here. And the way that I moved this pipe over a little bit was so that you could actually access it easier by having it in between the toilet and the bathtub. Take a look at it from here. This is going to be angled a little bit and then we're going to be picking the toilet up with a 45 degree angle here. And let's go ahead and zoom out to take a look at the rest of the pipes. So all of these are going to be 90 degree angles coming off of here to 90, here to 90 to make the layout for your project as easy as you possibly can make it. And again a long sweep 90 here. And then here we have a combo fitting inch and a half coming down three inches over here and then our clean out clean out is going to be three inches with a reducer reducing from three inches to two inches. Now I have found that in Canada you're allowed to make this vent pipe an inch and a half. But again you would have to check with your local building authorities to verify that information. Usually going to have an inch and a quarter on the bathroom lavatory sink and that will be an inch and a quarter up to this point here. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this video up here. If you have any questions at all or if there's something I missed in the video feel free to let us know in the comment area. And in case you didn't see it before, the reason why we're angling this and we will need to notch the back of the cabinets. However, we won't be drilling any holes through our king stud here, which will definitely make most building inspectors happy who actually look out for that stuff. 